morning, everyone. I'm Carolyn Cauley, and I'm president of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation. I see a lot of friends in the audience, so welcome back. At the foundation, our mission is to educate the public on how business does well, does good, and prepares for the future. So we pay a lot of attention to the conditions required for business to thrive, and I think an open government would certainly be one of those conditions. And we also pay a lot of attention to what businesses are doing to in, then tur in turn help families and communities. And the impact is great. I was just looking at my phone, and in the time that we've been sitting here this morning, um, evidently the FAA has announced that they're halting flights into LaGuardia, um, which is another significant layer um, of impact that I'm sure we'll all be talking more about today. Um, but at the foundation, we have been tracking another piece of the story to follow on to many of the companies and small businesses that we've heard from today, which is when companies can take their own services, waive their fees, um, provide free products and services to others, and help those families get through the furlough. We've tracked hundreds and hundreds of these companies, and we've got three of them here today. Um, I, let me have you introduce yourselves quickly, and then we can just go right to a couple of questions about what you're do each sure. doing. Uh, I'm Andy Hooper. I'm the Chief People Officer at Ann Pizza here in D.C. I'm Ricardo Chamorro. I'm an EVP at uh, Pentagon Federal Credit Union in McLean, Virginia. Good morning, and I'm Tom Chinelli from USAA. I work in the bank within the USA Financial Services Company. Great. Thank you. Well, banking and financial services is really important for people's lives um, during the shutdown. Tom, let me start with you. I know that USAA made a huge commitment to the Coast Guard. Um, can you tell us about that? But I'm imagining, as full disclosure, I'm a USAA member myself. My family has um, been with that company as members for about 25 years. Um, and so I, I get your newsletters, I get your mailings, and I know how you are on a constant footing to prepare families and, and your services around deployments and activations and lots of unanticipated events. Is this something that you plan for, and, and how did that roll into your commitment to the Coast Guard? Yes, so I think given that there's been previous risks of a shutdown, we have planned for this type of event. But I can tell you, I think what we're hearing this morning is the duration of this event is catching us all off guard now at this point. Um, so we continue to adapt uh, in, as we learn from our members where they have needs and what we can provide in terms of support wherever we can. Um, so I think first and foremost, um, we started with, you know, for our Coast Guard, um, NOAA Corps, and Public Health Service members um, who are currently serving, um, we offered a low interest loan to help them fill their paycheck void should that occur. Um, we've also expanded the program to include payment relief for if you have an existing loan with us, um, where we can defer your payments um, on a credit card or on a consumer loan to help you through, um, your, you give you payment support for cash flow. Uh, but then beyond that, we, to your, to your question, um, we looked to how can we support the broader military community as well. Um, and that's where I believe on January 15th, we donated $15 million to uh, Coast Guard Mutual Assistance. Um, and I believe Admiral Thomas uh, and the Red Cross are oh, here. here. Please stand up and um, say hello. Admiral Thomas, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> So we wanted to thank them, obviously, for facilitating, you know, using those funds to actually impact a broader community even beyond our membership. Mm -hmm. um, and we are still, I mean, we're hearing this morning, everyone's being affected more and more. Um, we're looking to expand our programs even further uh, to provide additional support. Um, and we're working through that diligently right now. And you're, are these multiple geographies across the country? Or are you, do you have key areas of focus? It has broad reach in terms mm -hmm. of its impact. Um, we're hearing from members. Um, we share member stories in a lot of our conversations as a company just to learn how they're being impacted. Mm -hmm. um, and we certainly heard one yesterday that, you know, it just really strikes a chord with us and it's clearly impacting a broad swath of our, our membership. Can you tell us about one of those stories? Um, I can. Yeah. I, well, let's come, let me, let's come back to yes. you. Um, You've been, your company has been through all of these shutdowns, 21. Uh, yes. Is this one any different? Does it feel different? Are you planning differently? Well, first, uh, thank you for having us over and, uh, and enabling this important conversation. It's pretty important to have. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about PenFed, which probably will answer your question. So we've been around for uh, almost 
1936 to be, uh, 1935 to be exact, and uh, our core membership is a national defense community and those who support them, which includes the Department of Defense, Homeland Security, and more importantly, all their families and, and other sub-agencies that, that support them. And uh, believe it or not, this is our 21st uh, shutdown where we have been providing relief to our members. So luckily for us, I mean, it's part of our mission statement to take perfect care of our members and uh, it's not taking us by surprise and uh, we're pretty prepared for it. And uh, we do provide, we're proud to provide uh, relief in a number of areas and we can elaborate on those as well. What is it that people need the most in your view? What, what is it that you hear people, uh, your, your members and your customers asking for? So first and foremost is, is certainty, right, and liquidity. We offer a, a skip payment program for those that have a mortgage payment that they need to pay or a credit card or an auto loan, and we provide immediate relief by enabling them to skip the payment. Mm -hmm. Second, we provide a direct deposit loan, which is basically a zero interest, no interest, uh, uh, no credit pool, uh, uh, basically loan on their entire paycheck. That provides instant relief as well. And then for those who are not members, we provide uh, a subsidized personal loan, mm -hmm. so it can help them uh, with uh, some relief as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, not a complete solution, obviously, but it does provide relief. And uh, we do it, one, because it's part of our mission statement, and two, because we can, and we have the breath and, and, and experience mm -hmm. to do it. Well, great partnerships and, and helping people have liquidity in this period. Um, and who doesn't love pizza? Tell us about And Pizza. You, I think, maybe didn't think you'd be giving away 20,000 pies in just yeah, a couple no. of weeks. Tell us about that. Certainly not. Um, so uh, I think like many of the sentiments expressed today, uh, we went into this not anticipating to be here on day 35 ourselves. Uh, but the decision making within Ann Pizza is actually fairly straightforward. Uh, if any of you are familiar with the brand, you know that we're not shy about our stance on social justice issues. Uh, and so when the shutdown became a reality, that was a very easy decision for us to get involved. We happen to be able to do something that's fairly simple, uh, which is provide a hot meal. And so uh, we opted almost immediately uh, to, to go and provide free pies to government workers who were affected by the furlough during lunch in all of our shops. If you guys saw back during the first few days of the shutdown, we had lines wrapped around the block at many of our pizza shops here in the city and out in the suburbs. Uh, got some feedback from many of our guests that they thought it would be beneficial for us to to move that around a bit and service some of the folks at dinner, uh, did that as well. Um, then did it during the mid-afternoon time frame, and, and as I sit here before you today, we're approaching uh, 30,000 pies donated to workers wow. affected. Wow. So. Geographic diversity, uh, diversity as well, lots of different places. Yeah, you know, I think conventional wisdom, at least for me, would assume that you'd see the, the biggest effect here in the Central Business District of D.C., uh, and what we found was folks visiting our shops in New York, folks visiting our shops at Federal Hill in Baltimore, all throughout Northern Virginia, Montgomery County, um, certainly a lot of the same sentiment expressed, which is that folks were, I think, very grateful. Um, and, and a very humbling experience as a brand that cares a lot about social issues and making an impact to see that kind of staring you in the face. The same folks that were in our shops the week before paying for their lunch coming back the following week and taking advantage of, of one sort of maybe brief and small respite uh, from the distraction. Well, that's certainly real. So I want to talk for a minute about your employees. At the foundation, we have a, a robust corporate citizenship center, and we know how um, frequently um, employees cite their employer's service as being important to them, and certainly it helped um, drive your mission. But tell us how your employees have mobilized around this and the kind of um, feeling and sense of being able to help it's, has been built up. Yeah, I'd love to share that, because I can tell you I've, I've been part of a team that has given up their holidays, weekends, um, emails, and you know, traffic at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., um, because we're building out customized programs of support. Mm -hmm. And that takes a lot of effort to make sure we're delivering and tuning it as we learn mm -hmm. through uh, a unique situation. Uh, but secondarily, I wanted to come back real quickly to the, to the member story, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, so we have uh, an employee who shared her conversation with a woman who was a mother. And uh, the mother was in the kitchen. You could hear children in the background. Um, and she had reached out to us for assistance. Long story short, there was an alarm that went off in the background. And our member service representative was asking, so what's, are you okay? You know, what's the issue? 
turns out it was um, an, an alarm going off because of smoke where this, this woman was baking bread for her children. And after she learned she was going to get some additional support to help her through these times, um, she was very thankful that she wasn't just going to have to feed her family uh, bread that evening. Mm -hmm. So um, pretty powerful story, wow. I think, um, that we share. And we, you know, there's numerous stories like this where our employees are really trying to do everything they can to help, help these folks. What about your employees at PenFed? Sure, look, I mean, we have uh, 1.8 million members nationwide, uh, many of them here in the DC metro area in Northern Virginia. It is our, our community, it is our town. Every single one of our employees has been uh, focused on, on providing relief in whatever capacity they can. We do also have a foundation, the PenFed Foundation, which is also laser focused on providing relief on a case by case basis, wherever, wherever that's possible. And look, I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, all the federal employees that are being affected. Our proud Americans uh, wake up every day, not only to help us in some capacity, uh, helping our national defense in some capacity, but also they wake up every morning to try to fulfill their dreams and aspirations, right? And every day that goes by without the certainty of a paycheck, it's, uh, it's one day too many. And what we're doing, our employees are doing, is trying to figure out within our scope how we can provide relief. Not a complete solution, obviously, but wherever we can help, we, 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 we stand ready. And again, we're a military financial institution, so it's kind of within our mission statement and our DNA to step up and help, so. Mm -hmm. You must have a lot of interactions with people through your, your registers, right? And your sure. people coming into your stores every day. What are you hearing from your employees and how they're feeling about the ability to, to help in this way? You know, I think people join Ann Pizza because they, they want to be attached to something that's more purposeful. There's obviously plenty of restaurant work out there. Uh, but they're looking for something that has a bit deeper connection uh, and you know with the core value set around connectivity and unity and togetherness I think our, our tribe that's what we call our, our, our team in our, in our shops is our tribe um, I think you know tribes definition is people brought together through a shared sense of purpose and I think during an event like this they feel that shared sense of purpose with the people who are coming into our pizza shops uh, we're a brand that's been made by this city uh, with our first shop on, on 8th Street Northeast, and, and the community, particularly a lot of government workers, continuing to make investments that have helped grow the brand, uh, our tribe sees a lot of connecti connective tissue with those affected. And I mean, candidly, many of them share a home with those affected. Um, you know, their parents are affected, their friends are affected, they themselves are affected and are working for us. And so uh, we heard from both our tribe and from many of our our guests that they wanted to get involved. So we created an opportunity which is now available in all of our pizza shops here in the city for folks to donate as well. Um, we're teamed up with Jose Andres and World Central Kitchen and collecting donations for that um, from our customers. We have lots of folks who are government workers who are at work looking for ways to, to take care of their, to take care of their uh, fellow employees. And, it's, just capitalizing on that in our shops. It's interesting how each of you in your own companies is adapting, as everyone is, as this goes along, like with each passing day. Um, how are you tweaking and kind of, you know, you don't know if it's going to go one more day, one more week, one more month. How are you sort of planning over the front hood here? Um, well, we're learning from how we're seeing our members react um, and where they need support. And then from there, we, we're trying to you know, design new tools or new capabilities to um, affect as many as we can mm -hmm. um, in the ways that we can. Mm -hmm. And what's an example of a new tool or a new capability? Um, for us, um, I'll, just, I'll just say as we expand our program I described earlier, mm -hmm. um, there are some operational requirements we have to put into place, which would be, you know, um, information we have to get from folks, mm -hmm. um, or registration forms and things like that, just so mm -hmm. we can facilitate the program. Make it easier, faster, exactly. More efficient. And in doing that, it's those are capabilities that we rapidly have to stand up right. that just aren't um, like rapid prototyping. BAU business, yes, yep. business as usual. And what about you? Like I said earlier, I mean, we are uh, very focused, laser focused on providing relief to our members. It's in our DNA. It's part of what we do. It's our mission statement. If anything, we're, perhaps we could use some help with the media and, and, and spreading the word that there are friends out there that can help in the financial sector. So uh, if you can help in that regard, that'd be fantastic. Great. Well, with the uncertainty ahead, I know it's hard to, to have a sustainable, pro you can't give 30,000 pies forever, right? <laughs> how, how do you take that pizza business and turn it into um, you know something that you can switch on and off quickly yeah sure so I mean as, as this has 
sort of dragged on, uh, we made a pivot this last week to shift to actually dedicating one of our shops in the city to doing this all day. Uh, so instead of kind of having the time move around or having things shift, uh, we have a shop over in Shaw in partnership with Broccoli City, who's another organization heavily involved in the community here in DC, uh, called Broccoli Bar, uh, where because that shop tends to do more nights and evenings business, we're using the shop from 11 to 6 every day to serve any affected government employee or contractor with free pies in the shop. And that's the only purpose for us being open during the daytime. And I think, you know, for us, it offered a more kind of sustainable approach to continuing that regardless of how long this takes. Is there a spike in business? Like, what does it look like throughout the day? Is it a lunch crowd, a dinner crowd? It, at, at that particular shop, what's been interesting is as the word has gotten out, you know, to Ricardo's point, the more people that have known about it, the more we're seeing folks take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and one of the things that's interesting, just as a quick aside, is, you know, that shop has like some Connect Four and Jenga and some other things in it. And we're, we're finding affected workers sort of lingering and having a moment to kind of get lost in having a pizza and hanging out with their family and friends versus focusing on what's going on. It's turned out to be a really interesting thing. So. A good diversion with friends. Indeed. Well, I'll take a page from my colleagues who ran the previous panels and just ask you in closing, what, what's ahead? No one can predict it, but um, what do you think is the next step for you? What would you want people to take for away us, today? For uh, us, yeah, I'd say, you know, we've heard from a lot of, uh, from our fellow customers about wanting to get involved. So I would just spread the word out there. We have both the opportunity to donate in our shops uh, to affected workers through World Central Kitchen at all of our points of sale. And we also have a GoFundMe page that we started as well um, to raise money for this. So we're asking those that can to join hands with all of us and, and do what they can. And it's been fascinating to see the $15 donation or the $18 donation and every little bit is going to help take care of folks who are affected. Um, and the other thing is we're offering volunteer opportunities. If you wanna help us out at our shop in Shaw or at World Central Kitchen, uh, we'll have that as well. And then I'd be remiss if I didn't say this as an HR person by trade, but um, we're always hiring for our growth too. So if there's an, a need for folks who are affected um, to supplement with income, uh, you can come see me directly afterwards or you can visit us at annpizza.com slash careers. Yeah, those, those volunteer opportunities are so important. I, I have met so many friends and colleagues and staff here in the building who are feeling a sense of helplessness and what can we do when we're not directly affected. And we're gonna talk a little bit later about things that people can do. So it's great that we can come on down to your shop. Yeah, please. Great. What about you two? What's What's the next phase for you? Well, I think for us, our, our, our guidance, at least in our industry, is I think one, to call us. Um, I think each individual situation can be unique and we're gonna try to help you with all the tools that we have available. Uh, but second, I think we're gonna be here after the shutdown, um, which is just as important. That's right. Uh, because once the shutdown is announced that it ends, I do believe there's still gonna be you know, ongoing support needed. A lot of after effects. Okay. Yes. Yep. It will take a while for people to get back on their feet. Indeed. Look, I'll leave the, uh, the politics to the uh, politicians, but what we can say is uh, hopefully they don't forget that there's a, there's a huge um, uh, human tragedy, as you heard Captain Jack and others speak, and hopefully they don't forget, and hopefully we come up with a speedy resolution. In the meantime, yes, we, PenFed, will be here, have been in the past, we'll be here today, and uh, my sense is uh, I don't have a crystal ball, but my sense is this is not going to be the last uh, shutdown that we face, and we'll be there to provide support and relief in the future as well. Great. Well, thank you to the three of you for being such great corporate citizens and encouraging others to do that as well. Again, we'll talk later about things that individuals and communities can do um, to help right after our next speaker. So thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.